So in the leagues, we're finally getting around to this this build of Just Guy Energy. We played um, a build without the Phantasmal images, like right when Mockingbird came out. Mockingbird has, has been really good at this deck. Uh, copying Guide of Souls, also Pride, Amped Raptor, a Johnny Ranger Captain. Are, it's, it's all nuts, and you also have this like loop de dupe out grindy lock plan where you could ranger captain for a mockingbird the mockingbird your ranger captain 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 against something um to either like just out grind your opponents or lock them out of a game and uh i have been playing a little bit with phantasm image in the deck too and image is also <laughs> is also just really sweet Image is also just really sweet. It's like all of these cards are just so good in multiples. It's so good to copy your Amtraptor. It's so good to copy your Johnny and flip it. It's so good to copy your Ocelot Pride. It's so good to copy Ranger Captain. And not only that, it also helps a little bit to copy like White Orchid Phantom post sideboard uh, against the Tron matchups. Like this, like one, one, one big issue I think for Jeskai and Esper or Mardu is that you don't get to play Blood Moon against Tron. Uh, but because we have all these clones, White Orchid Phantom is like a really, really premium cyborg card against Tron, so that really compensates in that matchup a lot. What about Geist? I'm so you know what I I I'm, I'm sure that's about Geist of Saint Traff. That card is completely unplayable. Uh, as, as, assuming I'm right that you're asking about Geist of Saint Traff, I don't feel has anything stayed under your radar from this set. I actually posted a long thread online yesterday about uh, all the stuff I've been trying in Bloomboro, so you can, you know, read that and get uh, some more details, maybe. But I think Mockingbird's very good. I think Port Mage has made Primal Prayers, like, a somewhat playable deck, going from not really playable to somewhat playable, I think, is exciting. Um, okay, so we're going to get our Johnny Thoughtseize, then we're going to go Guide, Mockingbird Guide. Let's see what else. I think I, th I think that the flare of denial shells um, are pretty pretty decent. I, I you know we trophied with the blue red uh, otter of bolas build and I, I like that deck and I would play some more of it. Spike is energy too strong for modern. I I don't think so. I think the energy archetype struggles against like a lot of ring decks and it struggles against uh, wrath of skies and it struggles against combo. And it's very powerful, and it is very good against a lot of decks that people like to play. Like, it's good against a lot of, like, more traditional, like, Merktide-style stuff. Um, but it, it, to some extent, it's kind of just, like, it's just, like, the... It's, like, Jund with no interaction, <laughs> almost. Uh, sometimes they play, you know, Thoughtseize, sometimes they play Blood Moon. They still play a lot of interaction. Main deck Dothy Voidwalker is pretty interesting. Now, I think I should get an Ocelot Pride here. But I don't know about... Um, I don't know if I should sack this Ranger Captain yet. I Because, like, I would really love to Phantasmal Image copy Ranger Captain and then be able to, like, loop-de-dupe this a little bit. And so, like, sacking Ranger Captain here is good if they have Necro. But, you know, if they have, you know, Thought Season of Voidwalker into Necro... It's going to be tough to beat anyways. Thoughts on Mockingbird being simply like Prismatic Ending? Question mark. I guess I don't get why only a few cards get this get this fate discount. I don't know. I, I, I like it. I, the card would be completely unplayable and modern if it didn't. So I'm I'm thankful that it, you know, is templated this way. So we can, we can play this card. Okay. I didn't want to play around the Undying Effect. Maybe I should have played around the Undying Effect. Oh, I just noticed we're playing in Selfie. Selfie's probably play not playing Necro, probably playing the, like, just his more traditional scam list. Um, I might copy that Grief, though. Although, copying Ranger Captain's still probably better. I get to get the... the Ocelot Pride again. Alright, let's sacrifice the Mockingbird Guide of Souls. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I It's... it. You have to... Every card is kind of, um... I, I I guess I'm confused like what what we're even complaining about. <laughs> uh, it's, it just kind of makes sense I think for some cards to be templated like this. I think it makes sense for other cards to not be templated like this. No big deal. All right, so let's get that Ocelot Pride, and then I'm gonna go ahead and offer the trade of this Ranger Cap for the Grief, I suppose.
Have I thought about doing merch? Yes, Esther and I are actively act so. <laughs> I actually have a friend who is like a manager at, or not a manager. I'm not sure what her title is, but she like runs a, maybe it's manager. She runs like a clothing company, like a clothing, like print company. Uh, so I need to talk to her about doing some stuff, but that is a, a, a nice lead for the merch. And then I uh, am going to, I'm going to be doing the play mats. Gonna hopefully get some work on it this weekend. Okay, so that is a dead ranger captain. They have zero cards in their hand, though. Why also probably was originally so slept on? I don't really know. I was, like, really impressed with the card. Do they have anything to tutor off ranger captain? Let's see what they grab. They grab guide of souls. So that blocks my ocelot pride. Although I would be... I think I'm going to... I still get to attack with the ocelot pride because I have the Ajani. Oh, well. <laughs> what a top deck. So I don't want to target this Phantasm image with the the Guide of Souls, of course. What do you think is better for energy builds, Boros, Jeskai, or Mardu? Okay, I, I do maintain that I think we should still maybe mention Orzov because I like there's a lot I like about Orzov, but I, I don't know Mar Mardu Mardu probably I think Mar I think Mardu is better than Boros. I think it's a little bit better than Orzov at this point, or at least I'm having a hard time. With my Orzov list, um, I I do think that Jeskai has been showing a lot of potential. And one thing about Jeskai is I, I it's been it's been winning like against other energy decks for me. But my sample size just really isn't big enough for me to like declare that this is the best version. You know, just a little early. I wouldn't hate to play like one or two White Orchid Phantoms. Playing Orzov list feels good, but less consistent. That's a good way to, to put it. Gr grief uh, in introducing scam elements is kind of inherently less consistent. As for energy is the truth, maybe I, I we didn't play very much with it. I, I wasn't the most enthused. It's been like less fun than just guy for me. The mana is kind of awkward, but frog is definitely really good. Is Eldrazi Tron favored against Boros and Mardu energy? Uh, I think it yes, unless Boros is main decking Blood Moons, then I think it it, it pivots back to uh, being favored for Boros by like a little bit, and obviously like they also have to draw the stupid. Uh, <laughs> you have to draw, you have to draw the blood or hit the Blood Moon off for Amp Raptor. But I don't know. I, I do like Eldrazi Tron a lot. I um, I almost wanted to play my take on it today in the challenge. The build that's like playing Breaker of Creation, no Urza Saga, no Immercol, no Cookbook. I like I like that build a lot. I think that build is really good, but I ended up wanting to play Bant Primal Prayers instead. Benjamin with the 18 months. Thank you. Welcome back. Appreciate you. Why not play five color energy so you can play everything? <laughs> I mean, honestly, it might be pretty reasonable. Are you supposed to block here? What I like about blocking is if my opponent has an instant speed removal spell for a Johnny, they use it now, and it stops me from like trying to flage the Nether Goyf. Okay, so I have no energy in my pool at the moment. If I copy the Nether Goyf, it's a one-two. That's not the not the best. I'm gonna go after the Castle Locked Wayne, I think here. I think I'm playing the Sacred Foundry tapped. I don't want to telegraph the discharge too much. A uh, challenge starts in like it's it starts at uh, in 40 minutes. So you, usually the struck I like to go live at the same time every day, and I like to kind of just start with a league as like a warm up for the challenge on Fridays, and then on Saturdays I like to just you know sleep in a little bit and start the challenge when I do those. Okay. I mean, it could be good to shock because of the factory. We'll just play this tapped for now. I might want to, you know, flage and discharge the Nether Goyf. Taking five down to 13. Yeah, let's do that. I have faith we'll draw something for the 
Mockingbird, because that is kind of like most of our deck. Okay, so now we'll just spend zero energy because we don't want to let this undie. Two cards in their hand. Hitting me for five again, this time down to nine. I kind of feel like against the discard deck, it's it's kind of prudent to kind of prudent to uh, use the cards in my hand. Swindo with the 46 months. Thank you. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Also, they just have another removal spell. Like, them killing this instead of the, the Goyf isn't so bad. One, minus one million channel points. Mod, please. Need to be able to ban Shatters, that trash talk. Modern all starting to hear the Harbinger. Ah, finally, someone doing something good with their channel points. Um... All right, they've already used one removal spell from their hand. Do this to get my life total not too low. League starts at 11 a.m. You mean you mean challenge? Leave this back to block the factory in case they have another removal spell for the flage. Unfortunately, I don't think the feeder leagues. Oh, they did have another one. I don't think the feeder leagues start today. Someone in the chat said that they didn't at least. Okay, very good thought sees. So now we're playing off the top, and they have a 3-4 that's attacking into my 3-3. Three, three. And I am three cards away from escaping this flage again. But now I've drawn a discharge that can kill this. We'll go ahead and play this main phase so they can't top deck another dying effect, but I don't want to... Um, Still don't want to attack with the Ranger Captain. I could also um I could sack my Ranger Captain if I need one more card to escape the flage. I, I guess I'm I guess I'll just do that if I draw a fetch land. Is this a grief? We drew the 22 months, they go come back. Is it a toxic deluge? Or are they trying to escape? I think they're trying to escape now they're going. Source of no feeder leagues. My source is that one Twitch chatter said it. I don't I, I don't know that that's the case, but. So this allows me to technically not be dead to two attacks, but if I, I don't love the idea of having to like get this blocked. This is a good top deck by them. I'm kind of shocked that they were trying to escape the Nether Goyf instead of just casting this Dothy Voidwalker. That was actually kind of weird. Great top deck. Now I would love to. I would love to try to uh, like train some Mockingbirds together, but here I think it's better to just Guide of Souls and then jump the Pride. And I can even attack with this Ranger Captain now. If they drew another removal spell, they drew another removal spell. It's okay, one charge never been wrong. I mean, I, I, would love for them to, I would love for them to be wrong, but... They said that they would set out Magic Online, we'll see. Oh, dude! Ah! Okay, game three. Good top decks, okay. Um, honestly, the phantoms look pretty good. Go down a static prison. I'm going to play one of these. What's the feeder league? So Magic Online is doing this really cool thing where if you 3-0 a vintage cube feeder league, you can play in a 64-person vintage cube tournament. If you get first place, you play in another three-round draft. If you win that, you get to draft a vintage cube in Vegas this year in person. You get to keep the vintage cube card. So power nine. Very exciting. Um, uh, but the demand is really, really high. And so they keep like, they keep changing the schedule of like when the leagues are going to be out and stuff, because they are worried that too many people are going to play and then people will have these tokens that they can't use. So they're trying to manage it. Uh, now it's four. Okay. That's a good change. I think it's a really good change. The schedule says it starts eight ten. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the schedule has just changed a lot, but uh, they pay for the trip? Yes, they do. Should we have grabbed the Mockingbird and copied Voidwalker to block? I don't think so. I think our line was pretty good. We we were bad against Bowmaster specifically, but I would I would take the line again. Does my token still count for 64s? They they should they should, yeah. If you have one, it should count. 
They took the Ajani. I'm going to still play my Amtraptor turn two, so I can go Ajani with Discharge my own cat on turn three. Isn't that unfair against who played the Vintage League early, Peter League early? I don't. Uh, I don't think so. I don't understand. The, I don't understand why it would be. When I play against Selfie, I feel like, I feel like they like second turn grief scan me really often. I don't know if that's just like my memory of the matches or whatever. But it happens like like more often than I would think, you know. Oh, sorry. I thought I, I thought I misclicked on the archive. Oh, my life flashed before my eyes. All right, Mockingbird time. Well, you know, I think one big case for Mockingbird is that it, it like basically is, is always like clearly the best thing to grab in these spots. It's just like kind of a glowing review for me. This I can't believe this is like this is turn three after my opponent thought seems to be in grief scan me. <laughs> I did top deck the did top deck pretty well though. Alright, so we're 1-0 here. Let's try to get a second match done before the uh Chally starts. Is Phantom better than Charball Cyborg of A? Maybe not any energy, but definitely this one where we have Mockingbird, we have Phantasmal Image, we have uh Amped Raptor that you know you don't want to hit. Uh, you can't hit Charm off it very easily. We're more white based than red based. Br yeah, great. Let's see. yeah, Charles starts in like 30 minutes, so should be like a good amount of time. Carrion feeder. We're playing the Bant Primal Prayers deck in the challenge. Um, I think the main deck is the same from the last time we played it. Uh, I'm playing some Run of in the sideboard because you know there will be more, there will be more Nadu than there are in the leagues. All right, so we're drawing untapped land or any two drop, we're pretty happy. A flare of uh, Malice would have been pretty sick here, actually. Because the, there were just been no creatures on board. How often have a mockingbird copied opponent's creatures? Very, very often in the energy mirror, which is of course just a pretty common matchup in general. Whoa, dude, this is such a funny board. Like three creatures that can't block against uh, against double ocelot pride is such a funny board to me. I think I graveyard this because I want to be able to go Ranger Captain into one drop next turn. Whoa, nice. Cool. Love that for them. You just plus, it's like you have plus seven power, and then the extra loyalty on this Johnny is super annoying for them. They have to like send with everything at it. Is there just not a need for something like Aether Vial? Well, there ain't nothing like Aether Vial. You know, that card is really unique. Um, but yeah, Aether Vial is like, it's not good with Mockingbird. It's not good with uh, Amped Raptor. So it like isn't very like considerable in this list. Oh, we get to test if the Ajani, if Ajani is still bugged here, if they don't concede, which they probably should concede, but their deck looks cool. I wonder if they're playing the War and Soul Trade. Oh, oh looks like they are. I think that they fixed someone. Someone in chat said that they fixed it. Oh wait, no! Don't kill me! Don't kill me! I want to ultimate a Johnny. Also, they wait. They can't kill. Oh, so they can because they have Guide of Souls. Wait, they have. Is this? This is. This is life neutral here. How's the Johnny bugged? Uh, it, more or less, the ultimate just didn't work. 
this is this was this was cool. That was a very cool game. Their deck looks their deck looks nice. So I guess I bring in hers. Oh, maybe also a lantern or two. Definitely the hers. So we have like one lantern. Yeah, I, it's like I think the ultimate like made you lose all your stuff. It was like it was like you should do not ever ultimate was how it was. But someone said it was fixed, so I need I want to confirm or deny. Nine singer twenty nine months. Thank you. Welcome back. That was neat. What deck was it put on? I think that it seems like it was a brew. It seems like they're playing um, a high a black white energy deck that's playing the Warren Soul Trader package and using uh, Knight Aaron of Aos as a, a a way to uh, dig for their combo pieces. Look pretty good. I think I'm gonna put this back actually. I think I should be mana efficient. There's there's maybe a little bit of a case for um, playing the other Guide of Souls first so I could just go crazy with energy. Hot Spring Games, the 23 months. Thank you. Appreciate you. Welcome back. So I'm attack with... Oh. Oh, they're gonna bow master to gain the life and the energy. I kind of feel like I don't know. I guess I'm just always gonna play it. What they hold on? You did not flip my Johnny. What? Why would you do that? Okay, so they did this because they have another bow master and they want to be able to. They, they think I'm going to attack with the Guide of Souls, and they go, second Bowmaster, ping this, hit this for three. But if I just don't attack with this Guide of Souls, I get to punish them. This feels like the best deck so often, Spike, with the Naughty Band looming. I think this would be best. Maybe. I, I will say Energy has a lot of bad matchups. We'll see. Wait, they get, they reveal both Warren Soul Trader and Marionette Apprentice. Like here is kind of a good example. Like my opponent just my opponent just has the combo and I'm dead. You know, like it, energy is is very good in, in doing some things, but and you know sometimes has game against combos and cyborg cards or whatever. But um, you're you're weak to decks with ring. You're weak to deck with wraths. You're 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 weak to decks with combos. So, so for me, it's hard to imagine that Boros is like the top deck, but I, I definitely think it'll be a big player post Nadu, and I, I don't think it's, I think that that's kind of clear. Their deck looked awesome. How they win game one? They, they had, they, they had a, they had a sweet turn where they like knighted into a combo all in the same go. Their deck looked nice. I liked it. You weren't dead yet. No life neutral. Uh, I think my life total was not. I don't think their life total was low enough for them to not for me to not be dead. But I guess I should have double checked. But also, you know, four thought seasons only go so far. All right, save me, Amped Raptor. That's a challenge. Challenge starts in like 20 minutes. Light Aaron feels good there. Probably better than Birthing Ritual. Maybe, yeah. How would you like to see a Helia deck with Primal Prayers? Uh, not very much. It doesn't seem like there's like... Doesn't, I don't like the overlap because like Heliod is not... a like you have to still activate mana for Heliod, you still have to spend mana on Ballista. Um, you would maybe be a good like a good at gaining life infinitely really fast. Oh, they have two extra. I was like kind of excited to static prison one. You're maybe good at like gaining infinite life really well. I mean, I'm 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 confident that you're you're good at that, but as far as like being a deck that like functions and is fast and actually could kill your opponent. This doesn't seem super likely. Okay, so we're going to be trying to go Ranger Captain hold, into Hold Our Breath into um, Mockingbird or Ranger Captain to lock them out of the game here. This is uh, the play pattern. I 
We get double static prison instead. No, I, we shouldn't do that because I'm I'm like very happy if they crack a map this turn. Don't think I'm very likely to need another blue source in the same turn. It is kind of sad that we can't uh, trigger our pride this turn, but... To me, to me, this loop and this like way to lock like specifically Tron opponents out of the game, game one, feels like so, so big to me. Glad we get to show it off here. Obviously, they could still, you know, cast some stuff like Devourer. So hoping they don't have a Devourer this turn. I might even um, just bank on only doing this one more time. Not sure. I drew another Mockingbird. That's pretty interesting. I could copy both Amped Raptors, which could be pretty explosive. I could also go just copy Ranger Captain, get another Mockingbird, and then... And then copy this Ocelot Pride. Copy that's probably better. I've got Ragavan in the current meta. It is a somewhat playable card. Copy Pride and Ranger Captain safe win. Well, my opponent's going to devour me next turn. But I, 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 this is the line I'll take. Yeah. Tron doesn't usually run Blast Zone. They, maybe they should. You can just Ocelot and cast it. It's, it's just better to to get Mockingbird because this can be a this can be an Ocelot with flying. It can be an Amtraptor. It can be a Ranger Captain. It can just be any of these things next turn. I don't have to pick. Can't be a Guide of Souls, but they get a Forest. Do you think Tron should be running Blast Zone? Uh, I think there's a, a good chance that they should be, yeah. Uh... In that case, wasn't it better to search also? No, I'm, that's what I'm telling you. This Mockingbird is better. This Mockingbird I searched, I just said this, is better than Ocelot. Because what can this Mockingbird be? An Ocelot with flying. That's better than Ocelot. It can be an Amp Raptor, which is better than Ocelot. It can be another Ranger Captain. All of these are better than, than like, tutoring Ocelot. I also just said that. Okay. Static prison number two. I think this is 10. Winning game one and getting to bring in these is really nice. It's good, it's good that <laughs> Tide Shaper is a uh, tutor ball off Ranger Captain and can get them off Tron. You go down to just three static prison. Actually, let me play uh, the fourth static prison, go down to Flage. Oh yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot that arena to haste. That that was definitely better, but they're also dead. Yes, but you can cast bird to copy ocelot. Yeah, but the yeah, but the the bird that I cast has flying, and the other ocelot doesn't, which makes it better, right? What are we talking about? Um, I'm gonna keep this, put back the static prison because I want to be able to phantasma image my captain. Thirteen minutes till the chally starts. Okay, this tide shaper is looking pretty uh, irrelevant here with them on the double tower lead, which is less than ideal. So it's good that we drew the best possible. Not that not that this triggers that relevance, but we just get to just we just get to copy this a bunch, and they are uh, pretty unlikely to have like. <laughs> 
uh, more than like one or two basics. I guess I guess I guess they they did reveal forest. Maybe they have two. Did you have a brood scale build? I haven't really spent any time with brood scale. Uh, I've seen some other lists. I think they're fine. I, if I'm gonna build like green Eldrazi, I think I'm gonna I would prefer to omit the brood scale combo. <laughs> the third tower. And they're holding up Kozlex command. So I don't want to play my Phantasm image into the command. Heads up play. Think it's harder to trophy and friendly leagues do the rogue decks? No, it's much easier. Not that I played them in a while or very little ever, but I've seen some of the stuff that goes on there. They they're a lot softer. Okay, let's go to game three, so we have time. Yeah, people also do play worse. It is what it is. There's nothing, you know, wrong with it, but it's softer, in my opinion. Well, typically off meta decks do well against stone quantity deck rather than versus broadfield. Typical off meta decks do well against known quantity deck rather than a broad field. I, I think there's a, a pretty big flaw in this logic where the the broad field is the known quantity deck. The broad field is the meta decks. So there's there seems to be like a mis a, a misstep in the logic. But this is also I don't think true that rogue decks just tend to stomp tier one decks or. Like this, it happens sometimes when they're like, like it, this. This happens mostly when a brew is like good and a brew is uh, like good and like tuned. Like then, then yes, then like this. This is a factor that you can think about and care about and is going to be somewhat impactful. But it isn't like you. You only have an advantage if your rogue deck is like tuned and good and like as good as a tier deck, which is not very not very common. It does happen sometimes. Okay, getting a little flooded. I think I had the Graveyard of the Guide of Souls. I've been liking Image so far. Code Riffic with the 30. Thank you. Welcome back. I'd love to draw one here. Yeah, we lost to Lantern last week. Obviously, you will lose to Rogue deck sometimes, but Overall, they're softer, and like the they're like just there's no amount of mental gymnastics I think that makes that all of a sudden not the case. You get Tron off their micro spawn. into something into a map, getting another tower. So image or mockingbird or, or one of these would be good. I just draw a Guide of Souls. It's not looking very good for us. We need them to also be flooded. You literally broke rogue decks for a living. Yes, and I think that makes me qualified to speak on the topic. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> that this that means listen to me when I talk about rogue decks. <laughs> the vast majority are not as competitive as tier decks. All right, so we need them to have nothing next turn, and we can go double Mockingbird next turn. We could have uh, Tide Shaper them, but they have a ton of mana, and they could just get Tron anyway with the map.
And, you know, this is, <laughs> as someone who does this for a living, it is awesome when a rogue deck uh, gets there. It's awesome when a rogue deck um, is performing well. It's, like, my favorite thing. But it, it, it just doesn't happen most of the time, even, even when you do it professionally. Most of the time, your decks are going to need some work. But here, with our Mockingbirds, we... One Ranger Captain has turned into three with, a, with another Mockingbird in hand. It's an awesome top deck. I'm going to sack this Ranger Captain in upkeep. I'm going to then attack for six flying, and I'm going to do it again. King HJ with the 60 months. Thank you. Welcome back. Appreciate you. Isn't Tron a pretty rough matchup for this? Because some of them good. We have four White Orchid, which is better. Uh, and then we can we get to clone our White Orchid Phantom which is awesome. And you can't play Consign in your Amp Traptor deck, or you should not play Consign in your Amp Traptor deck. We also have this. We won game one because of this. This loop. Shout out play patterns. You get Guide of Souls here. Four Ranger Captains in play, all of them clones. <laughs> And, like, all of that hype, like, died. <laughs> died. Because <laughs> of Nadu. <laughs> it's the same reason we didn't see Fury Band until they were well out, out of print. This is not true. They reprinted it in Image 3. Or I, Also, like, it took a long time for Fury, I think, to really become, like, the problem or whatever. But maybe, I don't know. I, again, I could be out of touch here. Of all time, isn't even an understatement. Yeah, I know. It's like it's so sad to me that it's just like such a crazy hype set, and they just fumbled it so bad by not ban, but with Nadu and also just not, not banning it. All right. Well, fast game. My opponent played a bobble. They surveilled a case into their graveyard. I guess I'm just gonna run it back. The real reason is that a month is like super short in corporate time. They do not see losing a month worth the amount of shit they get on going back on their word when it comes to winners. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think that is the attitude. I do think that is the attitude. A month is really short in corporate time, but it's like, but a month is forever in terms of hype. You know, I'm you know quite some possibly an expert on the subject, and in terms of like having people be interested in your format, in terms of people like like you you had tens of thousands of people maybe. I don't. I don't know. I like I, I a huge number of people who were like looking at modern for the first time because of Modern Horizons three, and I am. I am just. It just is so clear that a, a lot of them just decided to not. Oh, dude, they're main. They're playing Fear Fire foes. This card is pretty good against uh, energy. Um, they left. <laughs> you know, they left. I don't have a steam vents in the deck. Then they do the same thing last time with Hogak. It was, I think it was, the timeline was pretty different where they they tried to ban Bridge instead, which was like such a hilarious, awful ban. And then they, um, and then they did ban Hogak and it wasn't that long. Like, I feel Hogak was legal longer than Nadu. Maybe I'm misremembering. Tarfire, huh? So that's Delirium. How did they not realize when creating Nadu would be this wild? My my theory is that Springheart Nantuko was a card that had not been developed. 
think I have to flash here. Because, like, the static prisons are just going to tick down too fast. I need to, like, flage into prison. <laughs> okay, that was on me. So my, my big theory is that Springheart and Tuco was a card that hadn't been developed yet. Okay, I don't want these images against the dart deck, probably. You can play a couple Deafening Silence in this matchup. Don't always want it against them. Um, where it's like, if you if you are trying to play Nadu combo without Springheart and Tuco, and, and like, I think a lot of initial, like, brews and lists just, like, omitted Springheart and Tuco, like, y your card quality goes way down if you want, like, really deterministic kills. Because you're usually just going to draw a ton of cards and then fizzle. Which is why, like, I initially thought, like, Flare of Denial, more value builds were going to be better. Because I I thought that you were going to be able to have more combo-focused builds uh, and that also had, like, pretty deterministic wins. But this th this definitely ended up not being the case because of Springheart and Nantuko. So I, 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 my, my, my thought is maybe Nantuko was templated differently or got, like, developed really after Nadu. And, and obviously, like, it, it still was a big miss, but... I also missed it too, so it's I can't be too too harsh or whatever. All right, let's attack first. Okay, no attacks for us. I think I want to go guide with discharge up so that this way my amped raptor could like hit a removal spell next turn and have it be relevant if they play two creatures or like just hit a three drop. Also, can be possible they plan on hitting something else like a straight six. I mean, I'm sure they're going to do some stuff in Legacy. And we're not trying to smack people with a ban and then follow up with it by banning another card a month later that people buy into post Nadu. Uh, I mean, maybe. Uh, maybe. Hard to say. I think, to me, that's less likely than corporate people just wanting to stick with their uh, BNR philosophy. All right, that's Splinter Twin, as Dingo says, Amtraptor into a Johnny. Maybe the right band was Thassa's Oracle all along. Think about chat. So what's very funny about this comment is that the pro some of the Pro Tour Top 8 decks and Paper Nadu decks do not play Thassa's Oracle. They just do Sylvan Safekeeper Endurance Loops and besage you all over your lands, Odawara all of your permanents, make infinite power toughness with Springheart and Nantuko. That is... Uh, that's how Paper Nadu is played. It's a very funny to be like, <laughs> Van Thassa's Oracle. Joking, by the way. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, thank you. Thank you for clarifying. It's, you know, you can't always tell. There are I have I've heard many people on our usually like EDH players I think unironically suggest banning Oracle and like they see an Oracle and they just like hate it because it's you know seems to be a big problem in that format. Okay, land running runner runner lands would be good. Ugh. Okay, Mockingbird is worse when you can't cast it. It seems interesting that they're playing Case in their deck. It's okay, we'll be free soon enough, before we know it. I could crew and block to save one damage, probably not correct. Maybe this is a blessing? I guess they probably weren't sandbagging this. They have no cards left in their hand, they forget about Gigantha. Poor Gigantha shows up to work every day. People always forget about it. Oh, I did. For I forgot about Barbarian Ring, though. They killed my token instead, which is maybe okay with me. I guess they didn't forget Giganta. They just wanted to be ring before I hearsed. Can I draw a third land this game? We're 0 1 in the challenge with Primal Prayers. Got Nadu'd. <laughs> We're struggling. Struggling a little bit this game. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> We've had so many turns where like any la any land? I guess we have some surveillance. 
No! <laughs> How is this always so scripted, you know? <laughs> Both game games one and two against Nadu, I could have comboed on turn four, and game one, my opponent had double Haywire might to stop me, and game two, they had Spell Pierce. Not attacking with the mage is pretty weird. Okay, unfortunately, they remember Gigantha. We might win this game. Great, we're ahead. <laughs> Mockingbird having flying is a pretty big deal. And his Gigantha mystery card. Nadu is a lot of the issue. But there's something we said for how many tutor to the battlefield stuff they can make the deck so consistent. Sure. You could say something. I don't know exactly what that something is. And so I guess they're going to flash back the dart here. They also targeted the wrong Ocelot first, but I guess they're just planning on doing both, right? A man should take to fight Boris and jump dead serious. I, we were talking about this yesterday. I, I kind of think Jitte would be, like, unplayable or, like, close to unplayable. Maybe fringe. Being kind of generous. I cannot believe we won. <laughs> we won that game. <laughs> All right, let's get a four-one prediction going. Y'all keeping this on the draw? I think I'm keeping it. It's on a mold of six. It's a dingo keep. It's just. I think it's just a keep. Is Flage better than Uro? It kind of depends on what your definition of better is, and I. I don't mean that. Ironically. Because, like, I think that, like, f if Uro was legal, then, like, decks with Flage might have a, might, and this is kind of a might, might have a better win percentage. Um, although I think there's a good chance Control pivots over to Uro away from Flage, to be honest. But I think, I think decks with Flage might have a higher win percentage, but this is also because they printed Guide, Pride to Johnny, Amped Raptor, and so, like, Boros cards are just kind of crazy. And, like, Simic cards, Simic, Simic decks are not as wild. Okay, always had it, by the way. Um... Uh, but I do think Uro is the stronger card overall. Like just kind of like what what how each card individually has an impact on the game. I would I would put Uro over, um, over Flage. Yeah, Arena is another big plus for Flage. Um, I've been thinking about the sum. Fanatic of Ronus goes pretty hard with Uro, also though. So it's just not like, not like the biggest thing. Also, also shifting Woodland Uro is not nothing. Um, but I, I, you know, not, not a huge deal. So the Valakid Awakening two lands. What happened to Storm that they just brick on every draw step now? I don't understand. At least they could kill my Guide of Souls. I think I play Guide Pride and kind of try to force a minus on the on either this or the two one ones. So enough for yourself. I mean, to, honestly though, like Striker Rich is so bad. I'm just like I'm fuming. Like, <laughs> like imagine if they just had a channeler instead. I feel like every time I see Striker Rich, like if that was a channeler, I'd be in so much worse shape. But whatever. But I played a deck at 66 brick, brick, brick rate of paper. I, 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 it can't all just be because nobody's playing. Uh, <laughs> people don't play um, uh, Chandler anymore, but it's, it's kind of how it feels, you know. So let's attack Ralph first, maybe make them sack two spawns here. Oh, they messed up by letting me gain the life. Should I, should I, I guess I'll guide, but. 
Could be better to be more mana efficient. If only Amtraptor would tell me what he would hit here. I was on DRC and Storm and Stop Brick so much. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it just solves every problem, but I just think, I, at the very least, I think it's a lot better than Striker Rich. It makes you fizzle less, a lot less. I, I was thinking about playing Storm in the challenge today. I decided to go with this instead, but maybe I should have. Right, Angel Captain. Okay, well, take that, I guess. Unless they could be fine to keep if they top decks uh, a Ruby or a Ral. Impulse into Mounted Metamorphose. I think one day we'll get a huge modern unban list. I um I think there there are a lot of cards that would, could probably be unbanned uh, pretty safely, but most of them would not be like a big impact. Splinter Twin, Birthing Pod, um. Umazawa's Jete, Punishing Fire, Bridge from Below. I think they actually had another draw step there. I, sh I'm like, I shouldn't I should not be having all these silence, deafening silences. Storm just they need the help. <laughs> yeah, I think I I guess I guess I'll play one flage over discharge number four. <laughs> yeah, not Crowbox. Let's keep. Yeah, so uh, Hypergenesis, yes, could come off the ban list. Yeah, it, I, it would be. It's worse than Glimpse. <laughs> it is is worse than Glimpse. Could definitely come off. Lantern not coming in. Yeah, I don't think the lanterns are very good. Um, they're like okay, but they're like they're they they get played through pretty often, and they get played through pretty often. And we have Ranger Captain Deafening Silence, and not sure. Elves like be fun. Yeah, I've been thinking about playing elves some more. Um, I'm thinking about main decking a Sun Cleanser to tutor for Wrath of Skies, but that's probably not that wise. Okay, so before one with Jeskai, let's check on the Chally. Think Elpers could come back? No, I like I laugh at this comment. <laughs> Playfully and uh, full of banter in my heart. Um, no. Um, you know what? Let's play. Let's play some teamer prayers in between, in between rounds. That way we can maybe just kind of get a little bit. I'm <laughs> sorry.